All right, thanks for staying with us. According to World Health Organization, Nigeria has a density of four doctors per 10,000 people, which is far below the recommended density of 23 doctors per 10,000 people. The shortage of nurses is even more severe with a density of two nurses per 10,000 people compared to the recommended density of 25 nurses per 10,000 people. Now, healthcare staffing in Nigeria is a complex issue with several challenges and opportunities. On the one hand, the country has a large and growing population with a corresponding increase in the demand for healthcare services. This has led to shortage um, to, a, to a, a shortage of healthcare workers, particularly in rural areas. On the other hand, Nigeria has a young and growing workforce with many talented individuals who are interested in pursuing careers in healthcare. So tonight we're asking, how do we revolutionize the healthcare um, staffing in Nigeria? Um, please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 I'll bring in our guest in a minute, but I just wanted to quickly hear your thoughts. I mean, we touched on it just a little bit, right? What do you think would make sense, you know? Like I said to um, you, Sandy, when you took your story, Yes, it's good for you to increase the number of people that are going to be studying medicine or anything around the medical field. Mm -hmm. But the biggest problem we have has, has never been about studying. It's about retainership. It's mm -hmm. about remuneration, you know, and all of that. So but what do you think? What, what, what can we add to that? You know, how can we get, you know, the, the staffing right in, in our work, um, health care? I mean, training, retraining, mm -hmm. because, I mean, it's a different thing for them to have the first... Um, I don't know the first um, knowledge about it, but to keep retraining, retraining. Uh, you, you know, and then to have even the right infrastructure to be able to work in mm. and operate in. Mm. Because again, if you're not at par with um, international standards, then it also makes no sense because the same service you're going to provide locally, people would rather go outside of the country to get that, you know, service. Mm. So. Number one, infrastructure. Let's have the right infrastructure. Number two, retraining. Number three, of course, there has to be incentives to even study courses like this. Mm. You also want to look at the academic session in Nigeria with NLC strike and ASU strike. So if I'm going into school to study medicine, medicine, medicine is, you know, or before you do your yes. fellowship, yes, before so. you do this, your mm -hmm. residency and all that. I mean, I'm looking at, okay, by the time I spent 10 years in the university, number one, I'm looking at my age. My earning power reduces. Meanwhile, there are people who are doing three, four-year courses, who are out, who are in the labor market, earning higher. You know, there's a whole lot of... So the government must intentionally actually lure people into that, you know, space with, um, I don't know, some form of... Um, um, a lot of um, incentives, really, mm. you know, so we can bridge that gap. And of course, the the right um, in terms of remuneration, it has to. That one is even a no brainer. Yeah, no it has brainer. to be right. Yeah. You, you know? want to agree with that? Yeah, I definitely agree. There has to be increased reward for labor, mm. and you know, update the hospitals, the mm. equipment, and because I was reading statistics on Nigerian medical, um, Nigerian hospitals. And it was, I mean, one of them I'm going to read out as we yeah. continue uh, uh, during the show. So, yeah, um, everything she said, I completely agree. Absolutely. So let me bring in our guest for tonight. Faye Adeyemi is a highly accomplished and multi-licensed pharmacist with over a decade of experience in retail pharmacy and healthcare businesses. He holds degrees from the University of Bath and Warwick Business School where he earned his undergraduate um, master's and a postgraduate certificate in business administration. Faye is known for his, um, for his ability to bridge gaps between people, clinical practices, and businesses, focusing on problem solving and growth. He, he currently serves as the CEO of Springfield Pharmacy in Dublin, Ireland, and is recognized as the only black pharmacy owner <laughs> in the capital. His career has been marked by numerous awards and scholarships highlighting his academic and business excellence. And he's joined us live in studio. We're honored to have you with us. Good evening. Good evening, <laughs> and thank you for having me. Thank yes. you very much. I mean, so this good is an to our viewers. Yes, good evening. Yeah, he's saying good evening to you guys. <laughs> I mean, so, so I like the idea 
that um, people understand that, you know, in the midst of trying to save life, lives, right, healthcare is a business, in my opinion. If the government understood that healthcare is a business, right, by now a lot of things would have changed. Yeah. India eh, is a big medical um, tourist, tourist yeah. country. Yes. And most recently, Turkey. And mm. most recently, Turkey, Turkey. because of our BBA. <laughs> you understand this? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because India has understood that yeah. healthcare is major mm -hmm. and people at the brink of a lot of maybe health complications mm -hmm. would pay anything just to get well, Absolutely. right? So, and they understood that what they've done in India is making sure that world-class equipment, like best equipment in the world, you find it in most of the hospitals there. Yeah. So what exactly is our problem? Is it possible? <laughs> Is it possible to actually revolutionize our healthcare, especially when it comes to staffing? Because I feel like it's not really so much of the staff, it's the fact that these staff don't have anything to work with. But I don't know. You are the expert, so help me out. Well, <laughs> uh, thank you for that. I'm, it is possible, and, and I think you've briefly sort of uh, led the way into that conversation where there is a national strategy and a national consciousness, right, to say, we want to do this and we will empower uh, the country, the medical facilities, uh, medical practices, and healthcare professionals to achieve it. In, in, in fact, with the level of decay we're talking about, we will almost need a national, your country needs you type of strategy to arrest and grab uh, the situation. Um, to add to some of the stats you mentioned earlier on, in the last five years, 75,000 nurses and midwives have left Nigeria. Mm. Now, if you think with the JAPA syndrome, um, everyone on this table, and including the production staff, will know at least one doctor or one pharmacist or one nurse who has left in the last two years or is preparing to leave or will be leaving soon. Um, now, it's, it's like a floodgate currently. And um, when you then look at places like Turkey and, and India, as you've touched on, it's, it's almost like the government has provided an enabling environment. And of course, the government cannot do everything. And mm -hmm. um, where you see places that, that have sort of really good facilities in Nigeria, in Nigeria, you're talking of the Reddington's, the Evercare's, the Dutchess International, uh, you'd find that it's sort of heavy investment. Um, so to start with, it, it'd be heavy investment. We're talking really, really deep investment and perhaps a bit of restructuring, uh, as you've mentioned. And uh, the other part, which is a big part, is working conditions and pay. Uh, there's no way around it. So I've got a friend who will be relocating um, as a nurse to the UK in about three weeks. And she said, well, look, I love this country. It is the best place in the world if you've got the money. So why are you leaving? And she says, well, I earn 100,000 Naira a month mm -hmm. now as a nurse of five years experience in Lagos. Now, she works around Yaba and uh, lives around Egbeda to earn 100,000 Naira. And I say, how much would make you stay in the country? And she said, at least 300,000 naira to 500,000 naira. But if you look at the government pay scales, it would be chief nursing officers, mm. it would be um, chief midwives who would be around that sort of pay scale. So um, whilst the government has to do what it needs to do, uh, the capitalist, the free market, has to do what they need to do as well, together in tandem. And of course, uh, it is a great century to, to be in and to live in, i.e., one where we've got our iPhones, we've got our smartphones, we've got technology, and uh, it will then lead on to some of what we aim to do to sort of contribute our quota towards um, the, the staffing, almost a, a, a solution, a mini solution to some of the things going on. Mm -hmm. You know, so, sorry, Sanzi, before I want to just quickly hop on something you said, then I'll come to you, Sanzi. So, you see, when you mentioned some of the brands that you mentioned that have done really deep investments, right? Yes. The strategy in India was never to make healthcare expensive. Sure. It was to make healthcare accessible. Yeah. 
Yes. In fact, people were afraid to walk mm -hmm. into the hospitals because they were not sure they could afford it. Yes. So they actually had to do some level of advertisement to say, sure. come. Sure. Whether you can afford it or you cannot afford it, yes. come to this hospital, we will treat you. Yes. Do you understand? Yes. That, I feel, is the kind of structure that we need in Nigeria. Sure. Because the brands you have called yes. is an arm and a leg. I mean, yes. my, my, my friend had a baby. She had a son in, in one of the hospitals you mentioned. Mm -hmm. at, as at, I think, four days or a week or old, they noticed something that they needed to do an immediate surgery. Mm -hmm. They had to cover 400000 because even our insurance could not cover it. Okay. So I'm just wondering, is it possible for us to be able to get this, still get great health care that is affordable, that is accessible to everybody, mm -hmm. at the same time our health care staff are being paid appropriately? Is it possible? I think it is possible, and the way you look at it is, we've done it before as a country. So we think about our parents, 60s, 70s, and the 80s. They all had, I mean, the ones who were healthcare professionals amongst them, they had good living, they had great working conditions, uh, they had a good lifestyle. So, and the hospitals were really good and, and I know there's been this sort of circulating thing I don't know how true it is about some of the the Middle East royalties coming to Nigeria for treatment at some point at the University College Hospital in Ibadan sure. so you're then thinking if that's possible if we've done it as a nation before it means it's doable we just have to say look right now what's healthcare spending in the national budget for example you know tiny Health education as a whole, tiny. So it's sort of reprioritizing. And of course, the whole economic situation in the country has to grow. GDP has to grow. And then when everybody else grows, when everything else goes up, then there's more to spend on healthcare. Um, so it is possible. It's just that thing of one improving the economy. And then when they improve, increase the spending on, on healthcare and on education. Mm. Um, so if you've got people and you're thinking, right, the UK, for example, the UK comes to Nigeria and other African countries uh, or Caribbean countries and recruits tons of nurses. They don't have enough because the UK nurses themselves are emigrating for a greater lifestyle to go to Australia or New Zealand or Canada. Yeah, because so, they, they pay them better there. <laughs> indeed. So a, a nurse working at the Unilag Hospital, for example, thinks, well, look, after four years training, I'm on 100,000 or 150,000 a month, a bit of retraining, and I could earn 3,000 pounds sterling with over time. And you multiply that, take taxes out, you're still looking at about 2 million um, take home pay. Now, on a monthly basis, on a compared monthly basis. to 150,000. Yes. Now, as a far cry. now it, you don't necessarily need that much to survive in Nigeria, because, of course, the UK is an advanced sort of. Uh, world leading mm -hmm. economy, mm -hmm. but you know, as my friend said, if I could earn 300,000 to 500,000, I'd gladly stay in Nigeria. So, um, it, it can be done, and I, and I think, um, hopefully, with the new administration, I know the country's got lots of issues, uh, but gradually, it's like turning a big ship around, you don't just turn it like a Ferrari. It's like slow and steady, slow and steady, an inch at a time, and things like technology. And of course, that's where the private sector comes in. Uh, the government won't develop an app to solve all problems, but where private people can make an impact, and more especially the diaspora community. Um, and I think I've noticed the president talking a lot about uh, people coming back into the country. And if you've got experience and you think you can help your country, you know, no matter how, far, how long you've been abroad or, or whatever. Now and, is and the time to come back. Now is the time to okay. come back. Or if you cannot come back, if you cannot come back, um, because not everybody wants to do that, do your best to equip people mm. um, back home from a distance, remotely. Mm. Okay. We'll take a break, then I'll come to you, Sanzi. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, thanks for staying with us. If you just tuned in, we're discussing the topic revolutionizing healthcare staffing in Nigeria with Fei Adeyemi. 
Um, so please let's share what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp is rate one eight zero three eight four six six three. I see Sansi is just smiling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I saw. <laughs> she said something. Your blue is blueing. <laughs> yeah, <my> blue is <laughs> blueing. <laughs> but anyway, that's like Gen Z slang mm. or something. Okay. So um, yeah, I saw a, stat a very troubling statistics, which is I'll read it out. Um, we only we only make up about two point five of the world's population, yet. 30% of the world's population of women dying from childbirth are from Nigeria. And as a woman, that is really troubling because you would imagine that childbirth is an age-long practice that, at least by now, as civilized or as developed as Nigeria is, that, and even to a certain extent, far more developed than other African countries, you would imagine that we would get a hold on it right now. But 30% of the world's uh, maternal death rate, that's troubling. Yeah. That is. Uh, it, it is, uh, and, and I think it, it, it still goes back to some of the stats we've been talking about. So if you lose 75,000 nurses and midwives in five years to uh, relocating abroad, um, you know, I mean, before the relocation, that number is yeah. not enough anyway. Now, you're then scooping out 75,000 over a five-year period, which means that the healthcare staff left behind are under pressure. Like places in the north might have one doctor to 45,000 people. And um, so there is, and then the other part of course is uh, rural community care. And, and I, I imagine a big part of where that uh, maternal mortality um, happens will be in rural areas. So, a lot of work still needs to be done in, in outreach and education and um, getting involved in care at the community communal spaces. Um, it's still common for people to never to be pregnant, um, go through pregnancy for the nine months and never have gone through structured health care. So it's all sort of local and this sort of uh, grandmothers and the sort of traditional methods. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, so there is a lot of work to do within rural communities. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say to you that whilst you are, you are the one worried that 75,000 of your midwife and nurses left Nigeria, your minister, then minister of labor, yes. they said they can go, that we have plenty of people. Yes. I'm just trying to tell you that. I was in the past, I didn't okay. <laughs> it is where. <laughs> okay, um, you, you had mentioned earlier about technology. Yes. So I want to touch on that and ask you that um, how can technology be um, properly integrated, you okay. know, to ensure healthcare delivery okay. and staffing? Okay. So mm -hmm. um, with what we are sort of just uh, launching into the Nigerian healthcare space, uh, ProLocums. What we do is effectively create a bit of a connectivity between um, healthcare providers and professionals. Now, at the moment, there are lots of uh, platforms and apps out there where if you want to speak to a doctor, telemedicine, mm. uh, it's easy. There are about 15, 20 apps or platforms like that. But it's difficult to get a, a locum. So say, for example, you're Bagada Hospital, you need a midwife from 4 to 8 tomorrow evening. Unless the human resource manager is in the right sort of WhatsApp group or right Telegram groups, they might not be able to get one. Uh, and, and that's after asking the other colleagues to see, can anyone do this extra time or overtime? Mm. So what we've done is create a platform where anybody who wants to do locum work can go on our app, uh, Probably comes powered by AEM temp. Go on the app, look for work, and it just sort of focuses works around where you live. Mm. And and I think in terms of sort of contributing back towards uh, the society, we can we've almost sort of built in with our technical pa partners a bit of reverse jackpa into the system. So what it means is that you'd find out a lot of um, uh, healthcare workers, Nigerian healthcare workers who have relocated abroad. A lot of them still maintain their Nigerian registration, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. Which means that in spite of going out of the country, they still want to be connected. They still want to remain plugged in. So say you've gone abroad and you've done 10 years residency as a surgeon or a heart doctor, 
you can register on our platform and work in Niger, provided you still kept your registration. Mm -hmm. You could come on holiday, be in Niger for two weeks, and after seeing your family and friends, you feel, look, I want to do some pro bono work, or I want to be connected to a place where I can give back. You can effectively register on that app, okay. and we provide that connectivity. So as well as the people currently left in the country, we've, it, it means you could be a doctor in Adoikiti. And, and I'll give you a bit of a quick paradox. In spite of the shortages, you wouldn't believe it. There are people who are underemployed as healthcare workers in Nigeria. So it's common to find people in Adoikiti, for example, or people in, in Jalingo who might not get medical training programs. Or they might be low board in terms of salary offer, or there might just not be a clinic willing to take them on. So it gives those sort of people who've got the knowledge and the skills Opportunity. You have hit the nail that we have done. Because you see, um, healthcare is not, uh, see, as I am like this, I'm mm. not a journalist. I've been right. telling these people on TV, they will not listen to me. Yes. But you know what? I can talk on TV. Yeah. Sure, I'm not a journalist, but I can talk. Yeah. Healthcare is not like that. Mm. I can come now, just, mm, and I'm done. You're dealing done with the show. lives. You're dealing with human lives, sure. right? And the truth is, right, you cannot make a mistake. Sure. So the challenge I have with our healthcare structure. We've said this thing several times, right? You hear cases of, and let me tell you something, some of the death that we have in this country mm. is needless, needless sure. completely avoidable. It is sure. just mere negligence. And the right. fact that we don't sue people, it's a yes. yes. You know, I want to be able to sue people in your app. Yeah. That's number one. Let me just drop <laughs> that one there. But the truth is, right, yes. it is the fact that we, we, we have a lot of quackery. Yes. Yes. It admits all of the people that are leaving. Sure. You know, Mm -hmm. There are so many people, I mean, I told you people about the story of the doctor that relocated from America. Of course, his license was seized, but nobody checked. Yeah. So how yeah. do we verify sure. that these people are mm -hmm. competent? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because die, the person don't go. Yes. If you go and inject me wrongly, I'm gone. Sure. Right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I can't wake up from, my, from the sure. dead. Look at what That's happened so to the, the young man that died. It's not they said they not give him an injection. Sure. I'm just saying to you that I, it's a, it's a yeah. very tricky thing. Yeah. I, I get right? that. So yeah. how do we verify? Because staffing is our biggest problem mm. sure. in Nigeria. Yeah. Yes, we know that there are infrastructural challenges. But mm. you see, I have seen doctors that pay very serious attention to details. Sure. And they've saved lives just yes. because they pay that extra attention. We don't sure. have those kind of doctors today. Well, um, so to the first part of your question, um, there's been a lot of work done in terms of uh, verifying. To, so if you say on our platform... You know, it's you I will come and arrest you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to tell yeah. you to prepare so, your mind. Uh, of course. We don't uh, know the doctor. Sure. It's you we know. So, uh -huh. so to, to get registered as a doctor on our platform, okay. for example, so you've got to put in all of your things that tie it up to you. So your permanent... Uh, voter's card or your international passport, okay. your NIN, and they've got to match, your CV, and that shows the last place where you are employed, your uh, professional certificate, i.e. Nigeria Medical Council license, and your university certificate. So once those five things are verified and they are, they are all, they've got to match up, then we then proceed to, because we've had conversations with the, uh, with the NMC and uh, the, the medical associations and the pharmacist council, and we then proceed to verify to say, this is what we've got on this person. Are they who they say they are? So, um, <laughs> so for yeah, you, want to, you want to sleep a second. <laughs> 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 Well, hopefully, yeah, hopefully yeah, not. Yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, and of course, if you're going to engage in, uh, and uh, maybe there might be a 10% who've got this criminal behavior or 10% of the criminal bent, what then happens is that it means you would have gone through so much effort to give a fake profile, which will still get found out regardless. So I think a message I, that I could say would be, if you're going to put out a fake out there, just don't bother because it would just get found out. And um, the other part as well is that our staff then go through who you say you've worked with to literally look through the CV and verify. Mm. And once that's done, then you are verified and you are allowed on our platform. 
you can load your headshot in it to say this is who you are, who ties up with your picture. So it's very sort of methodical okay. and consistent. Let me help you. I Go hope on, we, yeah. can, we can rate them <laughs> like yeah, we yeah, do on Uber. Oh, oh, absolutely, you can. Oh, oh. I want to so, even help you people. Let me tell you <laughs> what I think you should do. Because you see, this is human life. If, yeah. you, if you were selling chewing gum and, and chicken, <laughs> yeah. I would not bother you. Sure. It's human life. So mm. I think beyond that, yes. it is not so much of the certification because we can fabricate for certification in this country. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it will check out. Mm. Yes. Right? I think we should do those, what do they call them? Those ghost shoppers. What do they call those words? Oh, mystery oh, shoppers. Mystery shoppers. Yeah. Yes. Do you understand? Yes. Where somebody will be sick mm. and go on. You know, I'm just yes. saying because I get you. we need to be sure that these doctors know what it is that they're doing. Yes. It's not certification that's my problem. Got you. It's the fact that you know what you're doing. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So imagine if you have, I'm, I'm just adding this to you. Please. Yeah. Look, yeah. look it into yeah. it yeah. because I don't want you to end up in Kiriti. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and people are, are resting now. It's you. <laughs> they are resting. It's not yeah. the doctor. The doctor would have. Uh, the doctor would have. 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 The of say mystery shoppers yes where people would just you know seek out some of these doctors are already on your platform yes. just to test, to that, test that they know what okay. it is that they're doing yeah i mean a young girl in joss went for a big hospital yes she went in for surgery right. and came out without one kidney wow mm. do you understand we've, we've heard so many, so many things yeah. so many. So nigeria is not a place where law mm. is upheld Sure. Right? Anybody mm -hmm. can do anything and get away with it mm -hmm. as long as they know the right thing to do. Sure. I mean, we saw a doctor, I think he's still inside Kiriki, I'm not sure. Dr. Femi, the gynecologist oh, yeah, that was, yeah. you know, busy doing all sorts of things in the name of cervical cancer. Right. right? So, I mean, and this person checks out. Yeah. Do you understand? So, I'm just saying that we have to find, because you're dealing with human life. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And, we just and, have to find a way to bridge that that um integrity gap because it is the integrity gap now that i am even worried about yeah. mm. okay so thank you for that um a, a a big part of the work we've done is sort of thinking about you know both sides i.e the premises owners the hospitals the pharmacies the diagnostic centers the uh, veterinary practices the physiotherapy practices and the professionals that they need so one feature which we've worked on as well is this ability to rate each other. Mm -hmm. And I think it forces everybody to up your game yeah. right. and as well as deliver improved patient outcomes. Yeah. So if you know that you're an irresponsible employer, for example, and you know that locums will rate you as not having the right practices and invariably you won't be able to get locums to work for you, then you will in, indirectly have to up your game. Similarly, if you are a locum who has perhaps a bit of um, skills shortage or gaps in their knowledge, eventually you'll get talked about. And once word gets around, which we, it will do on the app to say, no, please do not send us that locum again. They were terrible, they were outrocious. Eventually, you, if you've got enough sort of objectivity and 360 viewing, you'd, you'd do what's necessary mm. to, to uphold your profession. Mind you, you've gone into that profession, they are vocational professions because you care. So, and, and if you know you've got that gap, then you, you do what's needed to self-improve. Um, okay. And the, the beauty of the platform as well is that things, other features can then be added mm. as well as what we have According to the currently. Of the people, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I'm wondering, um, do you have plans to like, I mean, I know you're a private company, but do you have plans to like work with the federal government? Um, yes. Um, most of the work we've done um, at, the, at the initial stage will be to work with uh, private organizations. And once we've got enough of the critical mass, then it's easy to then sort of approach the government to say, look. Let's um, help you out here. Yes, let's, let's help you, you know, connect your places. Let's so how do we get investors in the healthcare sector? Because I think the biggest challenge that we have in Nigeria is the fact that, like you rightly said, it's mm. heavy capital that is needed sure. to mm. take us to where we want to get to medically so that yes. even the staff yes. would be happy working yes. because now they have everything. They don't have an excuse. They have sure. the training. Yes. They have the equipment. They have the infrastructure. So yes. how, do we, how do we make 
uh, healthcare attractive enough for investors to want to come into Nigeria? Okay. Well, the, it, it's it's a big question, and the reason it's it's a big question is that to do that you need other things to work well in Nigeria. So, electricity, as um, rightfully yeah. said, uh, because you know, look, if you're a big private hospital and you're spending 200,000 naira a day on diesel or a week on diesel. It's not sustainable in the long run because, Week of course, <laughs> which is small. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it, it, long term, it's not sustainable it's not because, profitable. yes, it, it eats into your bottom line. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, businesses exist uh, to make profit. Right. The other thing is that uh, once there's a bit of more critical mass of these type of mm -hmm. facilities I mentioned earlier on, um, you'll find that the medical tourists, and, and, and I'll give an example, this BBL, um, <laughs> there are some of it being done in Nigeria now, surprisingly, compared to, say, three, four, five years ago, where you'd have to go to uh, America or Turkey or... Beg your pardon? <laughs> Mostly America. Mostly America. So now, what are you now trying to say? Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. Do it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I am not saying BBL is done in Nigeria. <laughs> I don't even know what BBL means. <laughs> BBL is Brazilian butt lift, in case you're watching and you do not know. There you go. But hey... Thank you so much. I think we ran out of time. But yeah. I, I, get the, I get the thing. And I, I would say to people that, you see, there are so many ways to work, work around these things. I mean, issues around diesel or whatever. Get a partnership, right? Yes. There are solar solutions that are powering everything, powering Indeed. a full hospital. Indeed. right? So we, we can have those we kind of partnerships. So the plea I'm begging people is that whilst we're looking in the direction of, you know, other kinds of investment, healthcare sure. is big business. If yeah. you understand Absolutely. how to do the business... Yeah. Absolutely. It is huge. It's yes. not that yes, it might be capital intensive, but if you get it right, yes. trust me, you'll be you'll be yes. smiling to the bank, yes. you know, on a daily basis. But thank you so much. Thank you. But yeah, I hope you had fun with us. I did. Don't worry, you'll not go to Kirikiri. Thank, <laughs> thank you very much. I hope. I will make sure that you will, <laughs> you will scrutinize I've, the I've people. I've got seven angels, you know, singing and praying for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I think thank we had you. a fantastic conversation. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank, thank you, D. Thank now, you before all. we go, ensure you follow us across all social media handles. Listen to our podcast on, uh, on Spotify at Wish Your Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, follow all our engagements on social media, like and share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Sandy, why are you laughing? <laughs> oh. If you missed our oh, post for that. today, I will do it. <laughs> If you missed our quote for today, here it is again. It says, we must invest in training and retraining healthcare workers and make Nigeria a more attractive destination for healthcare professionals from around the world, right? We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Ciao. Thank you.